The old world is back. So what better way to celebrate it than to start a brand new army project? Ladies and gentle orcs, I invite you to the Big War Chronicles. You have no idea how long I have waited for this. The wonderful world of Warhammer Fantasy is back and I, for one, am excited beyond belief. The 6th edition was my entry into the hobby and it is this setting that still envelops me in waves of nostalgia. This is also the reason why I haven't done a goblin themed video in over a year. I was waiting for the release of these books, especially this one, as it finally provided me with the last bit of information I needed to start this project the base size. Admittedly, it's somewhat boring information, but still necessary. After all, without a base, you cannot place a miniature. Here I opted to use MDF bases. Although I still prefer the typical GW base for single miniatures, I really like the look of MDF bases on a movement tray. These specific bases are from Cromlec, and if you're interested in obtaining them, or anything else from the catalog, you can follow my affiliate link down below. This link will provide you with a 5% discount and also supports my channel a bit. Just make sure you'll have the discount code CROM48708 selected in your cart. Now every big war needs to start small. For that reason I decided to begin with the literally smallest part, the goblins. Although the smallest creatures would actually be the snotlings. Well, what can I say? Since I already had a bunch of goblins on hand, it made sense to start with what I had. That being said, I have to admit that my initial plan was to showcase a particular model range for a specific unit type. Additionally, I wanted to fully embrace the nostalgia by using exclusively metal miniatures. The only challenge with this approach, however, was deciding which model range to feature. At that point I remembered something I read regarding the Age of Sigma Auroch tribes and the formation of the so-called Big War. Here all these clans come together as a wild hodgepodge of Aurochs, disregarding any form of army cohesion. And as Aurochs are simply rebranded Orcs, it was here where it finally clicked. If I didn't want to choose which range to use, why not simply feature every range I like? Why not choose to make a real Big War? This approach basically meant that I was free to use every goblin model I could find and of course liked. I also tried to keep them at least somewhat coherent in size, which still resulted in a wide variety of beautiful sculpts. My goal was to feature only unique models, so there are no exact duplicates allowed in this regiment. Stick around till the end to find out which model made it into my first goblin regiment. So first I started with the regiment base. These come in essentially two parts, the base itself and the slim rim that you can simply glue on top of the base. I recommend PVA for this. I did however add an intermediate step where I first added the magnetic sheet on top of the base and then applied the rim. Here I also used PVA and it worked pretty well. After letting that dry, I covered the edges of the base with black craft paper to hide the seams of the glued together parts. Now it was just a simple matter of covering the small upside of the rim with texture paste and letting that dry. Now onto the bases for the models themselves. I aimed to emulate the style of my Gloom Spite Gits bases. The simple arrangement of dried bark pieces, a bit of texture paste added to a few spots and fine turf. As I mentioned earlier, I use MDF bases for this, allowing the bark chips to be adhered with PVA. For the front line, I also added stakes made from wooden chopsticks. I simply carved one side into a spike and cut them to a size of about 2 to 3 cm. Just ensure the spikes aren't too sharp and of course be cautious to avoid cutting yourself when doing this. I also made sure to cut them at an angle. These can then be applied with PVA though I would suggest providing them with some sort of support to prevent them from falling over while drying. Alternatively, you can use superglue, 
but then it's more likely that these spikes will break off later. I also used these resin mushrooms from Cromlech to move them more into the realms of orcs and goblins. To enhance the look of the bases and to make them a bit more natural, I used air drying clay to smooth over the edges between the MDF and the bark. This helps sell the illusion of dirt collecting in the corners. To add all the miniatures, I use basically two different approaches. For these slot mounted miniatures, I use my rotary tool to carve a fitting slot into the bark and adhere the miniature with super glue. Miniatures that come without these fittings were pinned, which is simply the process of drilling a small hole into the underside of one foot and the base. With a thin wire, you then connect both pieces, which you can adhere with super glue. With all the miniatures in place, I then proceeded to add texture paste. And after that was dry, I applied the fine turf. I used PVA to glue the turf in place and used isopropyl alcohol in combination with watered down PVA to seal the flock in place. Now letting this dry took a while, so this is a perfect moment to welcome the newest patron of Lenrix Realm. Hello and welcome Murfington. Thank you so very much for your monthly contribution of 3 euro slash dollars. It really helps a lot as it is essential for the longevity of this channel. If you also enjoy my content and want to help keep their cameras rolling, you can join my Patreon as well. Here you get previews of upcoming projects and also a bit of behind the scenes material. And if I absolutely have no idea what to do next, you can decide by participating in polls. Thanks again to all my patrons who have joined up and now let's get these goblins painted. As it's customary with every paint job, I started by priming the miniatures. In this particular case, I used brown primer. Following that, I applied violet ink from below to add a contrasting tone to the green skinned creatures. Alternatively, you could simplify the process by using violet primer directly, but since I didn't have any on hand, I opted for the aforementioned method, which works just as well. Subsequently, I finished the priming step with a white xenothal coat. As a next step, I applied all the colors in their most basic form. For this, I typically use paints such as Army Painter Speed Paints. Similar to Citadel Contrast Paints or Vallejo's Express Colors, these paints are, in my opinion, ideal for adding a first coat of paint to your miniatures. Within minutes, you can see if your chosen color scheme works as intended or not. To begin, I painted the skin. For this, I utilized four different shades of green from the Speed Paints range. Malignant Green, Forest Sprite, Absolution Green and Shamrock Green. By alternating between these shades, I ensured that each goblin had slightly different skin tones, albeit within a natural range. My approach involved applying one of these tones to the skin of each miniature and adding familiar pink to selected areas such as the nose, ears and elbows. Moving on, I tackled the leather. For this, I employed warrior skin and desolate brown to achieve two distinct shades for the armor, boots and fur. Warrior skin played a more prominent role in this process, while I reserved desolate brown mostly for the pants and the occasional belt or pouch. What is also pretty common on these miniatures is wood. For this, I used dark wood and forest sprite, which I blended directly on the model. This way you can get patches of green, brown and a mixture of both. This adds a lot to a more natural look regarding wood, at least in my opinion. For the metallic parts, I opted for Citadel's contrast paint named Terradon Turquoise. This choice offered me a nice base color for the metal, contrasting well with the rustic metal tones I intended to apply. 
And in the end I use Purple Swarm for the ground and Plasmatic Bolt for the mushrooms. For highlighting I turn to standard acrylic paints, almost exclusively from Vallejo in this case. For the brighter leather areas I chose Beastie Brown and Leather Brown. I deliberately applied both colors in a patchy manner using old brushes, stippling them onto the model. For the darker leather parts I employed Smoky Ink, which despite its name is not an ink, and mix it with Bone White. However you could also use a regular white for this purpose. I mixed two shades with a varying brightness and applied them in a manner similar to the previous leather colors. I admit, I took a much more relaxed approach when painting the skin. I used various greens from a collection to highlight the skin of these goblins, with a color choice for each model determined by the shade of the previously applied speed paint. For instance, I utilized the complete range of greens on models based in Absolution Green, the darkest shade in my collection. Conversely, for models already painted with a bright yellow malignant green, I limited the highlights to one or two greenish yellow tones. Additionally, I separately highlighted the pink parts of the models using reddish flesh and medium flesh. These colors were also used to add random highlights throughout. I painted the top ends of the spikes using the same colors I used for the brighter leather parts. Beastie Brown and Leather Brown. Additionally, I expanded the palette with Scrupulous Brown and Bone White. I applied them in the mentioned order, starting from the largest areas and moving to the smallest at the very top of the spike. Following this I used various pastel tones, predominantly green, blue and brown, to highlight the corners and protruding areas of all the wood parts. Next on my painting agenda were the metallic parts. I utilized steel from Vallejo's metal color line and applied it to all the parts previously painted with Terrazon turquoise. To enhance the worn and rusted appearance, I decided to wash each iron part with a diluted red oxide from Chimera. After letting that dry, I used silver from Vallejo to finish this step by stippling it onto a few highlighted areas. Now onto the base. I like to give my mushrooms a bluish glow, which I achieved by applying a white to blue gradient using these three paints. Typically I aim to wet blend blue green and sky blue and then use white with a small brush to add deliberate texture highlights. I dry brush the ground of the base with reddish flesh, medium flesh and sky blue, concentrating the latter on the fine turf areas. I also use sky blue to highlight a few areas of the miniatures that face the mushrooms, adding a hint of illumination. To round off the base I applied a few tufts and after painting the rooms black, these goblins were ready for the big war. And here they are, my first goblin regiment for the old world with each company that produces the shown model. You'll also find a comprehensive list of the miniatures down below in the video description. I had so much fun with this project that I want to invite you to join the big war yourself. No matter whether you paint an orc, goblin, troll or even a whole unit. It also doesn't matter if you use Citadel miniatures, a third party range or even 3D printed models. Additionally you could create a terrain piece or something entirely different as long as it's fantasy and orc related. When you're finished with your project, just post it on Instagram and use the hashtag Big War Chronicles to let me know. Feel free to tag me at Matt of Lanrix Realm if you want to share your Orc or Goblin related project. And if you are okay with me showcasing your work on Lanrix Realm, I'll feature it in my next Big War Chronicles episode where I'll tackle the core of this army, the Orc mob. So please consider subscribing if you don't want to miss that. Thank you very much for watching. Please leave a like and a comment if you enjoyed this video. It really helps a lot. 
So until the next one, farewell, fellow Orc Venturers. <laughs>